And welcome back to Fox 2 Presents. Hancock and Kelly. Joining us now, our special guest, Missouri Republican Senator Roy Blunt. Senator, thank you for being here. Glad to be here. We're going to cover a number of topics here. I uh, want to start with Ferguson. It has obviously been in the news a lot, and I don't want to spend the entire time talking about that. But uh, from a Washington standpoint, what, if anything, can we expect to come from Washington as a result of the events in Ferguson? Well, I actually think this is a this is a chance where Washington can be helpful as long as it doesn't try to be too helpful. You know, my my view has been uh, with the president, with the attorney general, with others, uh, let the local officials who are responsible for this do what they need to do. Uh, but uh, you were asked by Chief Belmer, by Charlie Dooley, by others to come in and help with the investigation. That wound in, wound up to be a parallel investigation. But I actually think that that's a good thing. Every, two different sets of people looking at the same facts should arrive at the same conclusion. And you know, there's a lot to this tragedy that you can never undo. You can never bring this young man back to his family. But you can do your very best to make people feel at the end of the day that everybody looked at this carefully. Uh, they reached the same conclusion, and that's a conclusion that allows us to correct whatever problems there are and move on. And so I actually think uh, the Justice Department can, been, uh, can be and so far has been helpful here. And one of the things they've done helpful is not to try to take over the local responsibilities, but to try to add to uh, the uh, look at what happened and do that in what I hope will be a positive you way. You were in full support of the Attorney General visiting? I was, I was, and and actually it, it appeared to me that the timing of that visit turned out to be pretty well timed, and uh, uh, I, I'd been talking to the Attorney General as well as the head of the Civil Rights Division from really the very start of this process, and then again as soon as the local officials said they'd like to have some help with the investigation, uh, I immediately not only endorsed that but called again and said. Uh, this is a place where we could probably come in and do some good as long as we don't try to do more than we should be doing sure. as a federal Michael. government. Senator, transitioning to other topics, uh, your party has been suffering at the ballot box, losing Hispanic voters. Uh, there has been a movement amongst the Senate to have immigration reform, yet it can't seem to come together in the House. Where do you stand on immigration reform and why can't you get something done? Well, you know, I've always thought, Mike, and you and I have talked about this before on the radio and in other times, I've always thought there's sort of three different problems here. One is how do you secure the border? Two are uh, what are the legitimate workforce needs of the country? And three is what do you do with people who came or stayed illegally? And that's about half and half. About half the people here not legally here came legally and then just stayed. The other half came across the border in some other way. And the, the truth is, I think two and three are fairly easy to solve with the American people if they feel like that that first one is under control. How do you get the border itself secured, both at the border and probably at the hiring place? Most people that come here come here for the perfectly understandable reason of trying to find an opportunity. But if, if you're doing the right kinds of things with employers, and people don't have what they need to get to work, people stop coming. This was a major topic in the 2012 election. The president ran on it. Many members of Congress ran on it. If Congress is unable to move it and the president starts to move forward with executive orders, what, how would a Senator Blunt respond to that? I think it's a huge problem. I, I think the, you know, the president's job, the president more than anybody else is in a position to try to persuade the Congress to do what the president believes need to be done. But if the president can't get that done, this idea that if the Congress doesn't act and change the law, I'm just going to do it for the Congress, I don't find that anywhere in the Constitution. I think it's not who we are, what we're about, uh, and it's not the President's job. In fact, I've got some legislation that the House has already passed, uh, the Enforcement Law Act, that gives the Congress the ability to go to court when the President is not enforcing the law as written, whether that's the Clean Water Act or the immigration laws. I just think this is a huge mistake for the President and the country, and I hope the President doesn't make that mistake. One of the problems with the, with the border being porous is this new threat we're facing from ISIS. And, and what's happening right now in the Middle East, there's a lot of concern that those folks are going to try and get into this country if they're not already here. Uh, what can, what should the federal government be doing to, to deal with this threat, this very real threat taking place in Syria and Iraq? Well, there's no question that 9-11 uh, changed the way we viewed the border. Uh, in fact, uh, Vicente Fox, the president of Mexico, was at the White House on 9-10-2001 looking for a positive way to solve this problem. I think the bigger problem, John, with ISIS is not the border, which has been a problem since 9-11, but people then suddenly able to come into the country legally. 
Americans who are there, like the American who was killed in the last uh, couple of days. Uh, uh, there are other Americans there who have American passports who can come back to the country legally. Uh, the difference in Iraq and Syria and Afghanistan is you're right in the middle of the, of the bottom borders of Europe. People get into the European countries, all of which have uh, non-visa uh, requirements to our country. I think this one of the reasons that we're so concerned and should be about what ha what's happening in Iraq and Syria right now is the access to Europe and the United States that is dramatically greater uh, with from that location than it would have been from the places where uh, Al Qaeda and others were previously sort of pinned down. Yemen. Afghanistan places much harder to get to this country in a more traditional way than coming across the border. Are you satisfied with the U.S. response thus far? No, the, no. and uh, you know clearly uh, the things that we have done to help create that problem and others, the uh, foreign policy that's so hard for our friends to figure out and so encouraging uh, to, our, to our adversaries is a problem. Uh, not acting quickly if we were going to act at all in Syria and then not leaving some kind of force behind uh, in Iraq that would have stabilized that country just as we stabilized Korea. Our presence along with the UN stabilizing Bosnia still have American forces in Germany. Those forces made a big difference and it's hard to go back and undo that mistake. But let's see what the president uh, proposes and, uh, and what uh, he expects to do. I think there are about a thousand people back in Iraq right now, and they are in much more dangerous situation than if we'd have left the 10,000 or 12,000 people that the military thought we should leave in 2011. Real quick, last question for you. Uh, the midterm elections are coming up. Talk some politics with us now. What do you see going forward? Which races will decide whether or not your party uh, regains control of the Senate? Well, we'll see. We'll see. You know, the, uh, a lot of this ground is being fought in states where the president didn't, didn't carry states either time. Uh, in North Carolina, didn't carry the state the second time. Uh, so, you know, the sixth term, of, uh, the sixth year of a presidency, uh, all the problems we see happening around the world and uh, the slow economic recovery in our country uh, should be a, a formula that produces better results for the opposition party anyway. And then you change the playing field to states where the president is has, is really unpopular. Uh, looks like the three vacancies uh, that uh, Democrats have retired in West Virginia, South Dakota, and Montana. Uh, as, as near as anything in, in you can call in politics before Election Day, I believe those are largely going to be decided, all three of those uh, on my side. And then where do you pick up the other three seats? And yeah, we'll see Election Day. These guys are a great election uh, analyst. Uh, but my, my view is an Election Day that produces 51 Republicans is probably about as likely to produce 52 or 53. If the dynamics that day are such, uh, that you're beginning to see states move. The, the playing field is there in a way that should allow for maybe 60 percent odds right now that uh, you'll have a Republican majority in the Steak Senate. Steak dinner, Kelly? Odds. Steak dinner. All right. Democrats yeah. hold it. Yeah. You and I will get something else, I think. Exactly. Right. We'll, have, we'll have popcorn. There you go. All right, Mr. Senator Roy Blunt. Thank, Thank you very much for being Thank here. We'll be right back here in Fox 2 Presents Hancock and Kelly.